Hi, grade nines. Welcome to your second e-learning lesson of 2020. The title of this lesson is a fancy word, Cartesian coordinate system. We're going to talk about pairs of numbers. Your first assignment, the, the video that you watched last time, had to do with finding a solution to an equation, but the equation had two letters, two variables in it. So when you got an answer, for example, x plus y equals 10, you said, well, I know that if x is 5 and y is 5, that would be a solution to this equation. And I told you that when you have two numbers like this with a comma between them, they're referred to as an ordered pair. And so this is going to be our focus. What are these pairs of numbers? What are they important for? How, why do they come up? That's the topic that we're headed towards. So we're building the foundation. Today we're going to talk about the coordinate system. Uh, there was a story that Rene Descartes, a famous 17th century French mathematician, he was a sickly kid but a genius. So he was lying in bed, sick, yet again, no TV in those days, totally bored, and he sees a spider crawling on his ceiling. So as he watches this spider crawling, he's trying to figure out how he could describe the exact location of the spider at any instant. And so he created this technique where if you pretend like this big piece of paper is his ceiling, he divided the ceiling down the middle, this way, and he divided the ceiling down the middle along a horizontal line. Each of these four sections is called a quadrant, and this is considered the first quadrant. For some reason, he went this way, not sure why, but this is called the second quadrant, if you go to the left. When you go down, so I'm going counterclockwise, this is what's called quadrant three. And of course, that leaves this guy down here. He is known as the fourth quadrant. We then refer to this axis. This line is called an axis, and it's referred to as the x-axis. The vertical line is also an axis. It's called the y-axis. The x-axis and the y-axis are perpendicular to each other, meaning they meet at 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle. Uh, this point where the x-axis and the y-axis meet is called the origin. Now what you do, everything starts at the origin. Origin means the beginning. So if everything starts at the origin, what I want to do is number each of these blue lines. If I go to the right, then I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. If I go left, it's referred to as negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. The numbers keep going. What I'm doing is labeling my x-axis by units of one. You do the same thing on the y-axis. You always start at the origin, that's the start point. If you go up, it's positive, one, two, three, four, five. If you go down, it's negative. Now notice I made a huge grid, which took up my whole paper. I could have labeled my axis much higher and my y-axis. You don't always have to draw this graph, this grid, quite so large. You could take a piece of paper and make a grid that's much smaller. Depending on how you're going to use it, you might not need big numbers. But again, if I quickly draw it, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, one, two, three, four, five. Up is positive, down is negative. You can see I made kind of a tiny graph, but that's okay. Graphs can be as large or as small as you need. Now you can create your own graph. If you have this kind of graph paper at home, you can get it at Dollarama, you can get it at Staples, you might even be able to get it in the gross in some grocery stores, in some corner grocery stores. 
We like to use this graph paper in math. We don't like to use the tiny green grid, it's too small. Attached under contents, we made some graph paper for you and the grid is already marked. Now they do go by ones, but there's not enough room to write every number. But everything always goes by ones, one, two, three. We just label every other location so it doesn't look too squishy. You're welcome to print up these pages and use them if you can, if you have a printer at home. So what we're gonna learn to do is take a pair, the one I suggested on the previous page was five, five, and we're gonna learn to put that in its location because what an ordered pair really is, it's an exact location. This is how um, Rene Descartes thought of it. He said, if I start at the middle, the origin we call, this positive five, the first number, remember, was the x. Remember the order was very important. Now it happens in this case that both x and y are five. We'll do examples in a minute where they're not the same. But the idea would be where is this exact location? Because if he said to his mom, the spider's at five, five, she would have to locate it. She would start at the origin. The x is how many units to the right you would go. I would go five units to the right. That's what this first five designates. But in order to finish it off, you also have to go up five units because Y goes up. One, two, three, four, five. And that location right there, which I'll call with a capital A, is called a point. That's an exact location designated by the ordered pair five, five. So ordered pairs really are exact locations, points, on a Cartesian graph. And the object of the game for today's lesson is to learn to put points down in the right location. Or if I tell you I have a point B located here and I say what ordered pair represents this particular point, you would have to start at the origin and count over to B. And you begin by start at the origin and you say, well, I have to go one, two, three, four units to the right. So my X in the pair will be four. And then I have to go down two, which means on the Y, I'm going negative two. And so B is, um, the point B is designated by the ordered pair for negative two. So we're gonna give you a handout for homework. It's also attached. It looks like this. There's points all over the place. So even if you can't print, you can look at the screen and you can say, okay, I know what point A is, for example, this A right here. You start at the origin. So in this big graph, this is the origin. You wanna to get to A, so you have to go right or left X, right or left, that's X, first. So if I start at the origin, if I'm gonna to go to A, then clearly I'm going to the left, all the way to negative 10, as you can see here. So if you're labeling A, you're gonna begin by saying, I went left 10. X goes first, it's left. You then say, all right, if I wanna end up at A, I have to go up one, two, three, four, five. And A is the point, is designated by the order pair, negative 10, five. If you decide that A is the point negative 10, five, then you go down, and this is the part you have to copy. So you would copy these ordered pairs and then you look for negative 10, five and where you find a negative 10 comma five, which has to be here somewhere. If it's not here, it means you made a mistake. Here it is, negative 10, five. You put the letter A. And if you do the whole thing correctly, you will get a message, which is the answer to the question, what happened after a burglary broke into a tuba factory. So that's one way we're gonna practice locating and designating points by ordered pairs. The second skill, probably best to do it on this graph paper if you can print it. If you can't print it, you have to make your own grid and you can make a small grid. Now in this question, it looks like this, number 40. It says plot and join these sets of points in order. So I'm gonna do an example here where I'm gonna say A is the point four, negative six. Then I'm gonna say B is the point 
three, two, and C is the point for positive five. So I want to graph these points in order. This is what number 40 is telling you to do. And so I'm gonna use my grid up here, but I'm gonna do this in red. And so I'm going to scratch those out. Maybe I better not. Maybe I better quickly make a clean, nice grid so that it looks better. So what I'm going to do now is label it one, two, three, four, five. You always have to label it. You have to be neat. You have to label your axes X and Y. As you can see, it would be very challenging to do this without graph paper. So we're hoping that everybody can get their hands on graph paper of some kind, either by going to the Dollarama or hopefully you have some at home. I'm gonna put these points in order. So the first point I'm gonna put down in red is A. So four, you start at the origin, you always go right or left first. That's the X. So because it's positive, I go to the right four, and then you go up or down second, next, okay? And those are the Ys. So I started the drawing, I go right four, down to six. That's negative four, negative five, and then you label it with an A, point number one. Now you do point number two, the second point, which is three, two. Start at the origin, go to the right three, go up two, and that puts you here. That's B. The third point, and then it says connect them. So I'm gonna take my pencil, use a ruler so that it's neat, and connect. A to B because B A was first, B was second. C is the third point, so I'm going to put C down. I start at zero zero, the origin zero comma zero. I don't think I said that before. That point right there, the origin, is designated by the ordered pair zero zero because you don't go anywhere for the x, and then you don't go anywhere for the y. So the origin is zero, zero. That's where you start. C says go to the right four, then up five, and I end up right there, and that's C. And so the instructions tell me to connect B to C, because you connect the points in order. Then join the last point to the first point, as it says here, to form a closed figure. And so if I connect, Okay, and then I get a shape. And the question says, identify the shape. So I write a triangle. You might get a rectangle, you might get a square, you might get a parallelogram. Then it says, find the area of the figure. So you have to remember that area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, and you have to count out the base and height in this triangle. So here, Remember that the height has to be a perpendicular. So if this was the, the triangle, this from A to C would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The base is 11. And the height is right here. Because the height inside has to meet the base at a right angle. And so the height is only 1 divided by two, so we get 11 over two, which is five and a half square units. So you have to construct it, connect the lines in order, name it, put the formula down for that shape, and work it out. And there are five different ones to do here. You have to make a grid for A and do it. You have to make a new grid for B, don't put them on the same grid. Each one goes on a separate grid. So if you print up the paper from, if you can, you can put A here, B here, C here, and so on, and you label it. The last piece of homework is to do 41, which I'll leave you to read and do on your own. And that's basically your introduction to graphing ordered pairs. As we learn more, we will connect what